It is Palm Sunday. That means this is the week before Easter. Are we ready? Are you ready? Sometimes we feel so scattered, it's hard to be ready. Our, our feet are going one place, our heart is in another. Our minds wander, and between hay fever and colds, our noses are running. We're all over the place as we prepare ourselves for holy or for any week. Let's take a little time to put ourselves together, to connect, connect heart and mind, body and soul. Let's take some time to connect with others and connect with God. We could do that, right? As we each do our best to try and put it all together, we actually call that worship. So welcome to Worship with Jubilee. And we'll start with a song from last week that has nothing to do with Palm Sunday, but it is simply too good not to share.
It's been a tricky start to spring. Rain, then snow, so warm, so cold. Sometimes all on the same day. But April is upon us. And it's April the 2nd, so this is not an April Fool's joke. Spring is with us. Geese are going where they belong. Flowers are asserting themselves. And we can be assured that even as it gives us worries, it is here to stay. And that is good news. We are here together. But what does it mean that we're together when we are meeting virtually? It means that we acknowledge that each of us is part of the story. The story of humanity, the story of faith, and the story of God. We connect in these stories and these stories are reflected in us, each of us, where we are, as we are, who we are. We are young and old and in between. We are steeped in faith, new to this faith, at odds with faith. And the stories of humanity, of faith, and of God are reflected in us. We are many colors and cultures, celebrating our different heritages in our appearance, our speech, our food, our very way of being, even as we create anew. And so we are intentionally anti-racist, recognizing that racism is a reality of the world in which we live, but that God invites us to live a better way. So we make mistakes and we learn from them. We speak out and we stand with those who are not provided equal say, equal access, or equal consideration under colonial customs, laws, and culture. We are one with those who are disabled and shut out of what many simply take for granted. We are gay, lesbian, bi, trans, queer, two-spirited, binary, non-binary, fluid, cis, hetero. We are an emerging diversity with differing experiences, perspectives, and wisdom that combine to tell the deeper, broader, and glorious stories of humanity, of faith, and of God. These stories cannot be fully told without us, all of us. Many of us were born on the land where we live. Some of us came here by choice. Some of us were brought here or are descended from those who had no choice but to be here. Some of us are descended from those who have been here for longer than history can account. We acknowledge the first peoples to be on and with this land, their wisdom, spirit, and spirituality that stretches from the distant past into the present day. The Jubilee United Church building is in Toronto, land that has nurtured and shaped the Wendat, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa, the Mississaugas of the New Credit, and all who entered into the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant of 1701 to share and nurture the land together for mutual sustenance. Settlers came into this land agreeing to the covenant, but not honoring it. And those of us who are settlers and descended from settlers Acknowledge the crime and the pain of residential schools, injustice, and systemic racism that continues to this day. We commit ourselves to seeing and knowing the people who welcomed our ancestors to this land, to exploring deeply the issues that confront Indigenous peoples today, and to learning from the wisdom and medicine that our many and varied Indigenous nations, tribes, and cultures offer us as we work together for a tomorrow that is better than today. Together, we are committed to sharing and writing the stories of humanity, of faith, and of God. And we are very glad that you are part of the story of Jubilee. You know that you can find us on TikTok. Hi, I'm Reverend Brianne, and it's Wednesday. And I'm here to remind you 
that God loves you. YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. We provide podcasts and vlogs and a number of other things that help support and nurture virtual digital community. This is our digital Palm Sunday service. It has the same theme and similar content to our in-person worship, but it is uniquely created for you, our digital community. We value you and we are very glad to be community with you. And with time, we hope to build something unique, not just for you, but with you. So thank you for being part of this and sharing it with others as we build and shape digital community. Jubilee United Church also gathers in person for community activities and for worship. And at present, we have a masks optional policy, which means that you're not required to wear a mask when gathering indoors at Jubilee. But we do ask you to respect those who do wear masks and wish to practice social distancing. So please approach people carefully and be sure that they're ready for you to be close. We also ask that if you're feeling unwell for any reason or have been exposed to COVID, that you stay home until you can be confident that you won't make anyone unwell. In Sunday worship, I notice about one in five people wearing masks, and at Tuesday coffee, it's about one in ten. So we hope to continue to emerge safely and lovingly from this time of pandemic, and thus far we have been quite successful thanks to your understanding, patience, and cooperation. So Holy Week is upon us, and you are invited to participate. There will be an in-person Bible study in the Garden Room Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. There will also be an online Bible study on Zoom Monday through Friday at noon to 1 p.m. Both Bible studies will be looking at largely familiar stories of the resurrection of Jesus, but inviting each of us to wonder about the story and, and, and come to understand what it might mean for us in 2023. There will be a Monday Thursday gathering in the sanctuary on Thursday, April 6th at 6 p.m. As we once did before COVID, we will gather at a long table to share simple food and the story of Easter from the Last Supper through the resurrection of Jesus. The food will be served buffet style and include craft dinner, yes, craft dinner, chicken, shrimp, vegetables, and bacon. And you'll be invited to imagine what these foods might symbolize for us. And don't worry, there is no right answer, just interesting ones. There's no cost for this meal or gathering, but you will have the opportunity to donate to cover our costs at the event. We do ask, however, that you sign up, and we need you to sign up no later than Monday, April 3rd. That's tomorrow. There is a sign-up sheet in the foyer at the church, or you can call the church office at 416-447-6846, or email me directly at nclai at jubileeunited.ca. There will be a Good Friday service on Friday, April the 7th at 10.30 a.m. with readings and music and an opportunity to reflect on the crucifixion of Jesus and what it means to us and for the world. There will also be an online Good Friday service available on Friday, April the 7th at 10.30 a.m and any time after. On Sunday morning, there will be an Easter sunrise service outside of the labyrinth in front of Jubilee at 8 a.m. 8 a.m., that's why we spelled sun, S-O-N, in sunrise. It will be an informal service around a fire, sharing some music, the story of Easter, and communion with bread and juice. It is intimate, and it is quite wonderful. It will last about 45 minutes which means that you'll have time to join us for Easter breakfast in the auditorium at 9 a.m. We will be serving pancakes and French toast, as well as sausages and bacon. There's no charge for the meal, but donations of about $5 each should cover all the costs of the food. We are asking you to sign up for this meal, and much like Monday, Thursday, we need to know by Monday at the latest. And we also need to know if you prefer pancakes or French toast, so that we can have, you know, the right amounts ready. There is a sign-up sheet in the foyer at the church, or you can call the church office at 416-447-6846, or email me at ncline at jubileeunited.ca. And then we will have our Easter service at 10.30 a.m. Lots of music, the Easter story, and you get to reclaim your Palm Sunday shirts. A great celebration that you really don't want to miss. Good for the whole family. Oh, and then one more thing. 
an Easter egg hunt after the service for the kids because, well, because it's Easter and we want to have some fun. Of course, we always want pictures and limericks for our services, but we'll talk about that more next week. You've got a lot on this week. Today, it's Palm Sunday, a time of celebration. But if you listen carefully to the various accounts of the event, you discover, well, that somebody provided a donkey. Others offered up their cloaks. As much as this is about Jesus and God, it doesn't happen without people being involved. Kind of like Jubilee. We are called by God to be present in the community, to invite people into belonging, not just with each other, but also with God. Together we create a time and place. We provide opportunity and inspiration, a vocabulary and companionship for each of us, all of us, to share and grow in our faith. But like Palm Sunday, it doesn't happen unless somebody donates a donkey, or puts their cloaks on the ground, or makes arrangements, or finds and shares green branches to wave. You see, there's so much involved. What you do at Jubilee is integral to our shared faith. Your actions, your presence, and your love bring our hopes to life. Your financial gifts help us to do, well, to do all of those things right now, but also make it possible for us to be confident that we'll be able to do it for the next generation and the one that comes after that. Your contributions through PAR, pre-authorized remittance, check, e-transfer to admin at jubileunited.ca, through canadahelps.org, or shared in person on Sunday through cash or church envelopes are essential to our ministry and as much a part of our story of faith as any aspect of our church life. Because of you, people are invited into deeper relationship with God and come to know that they are loved. Because of you, resurrection becomes very real for people who sometimes feel that they are stuck in Good Friday. So thank you very much for all of that. We give thanks to God because they are so good and their love <laughs> their love lasts forever and ever. We thank you because you enter our prayers and give us hope. It's like a brick that the builders have thrown in the trash became the most important one. God did that, and it is awesome. This is the day that God has made. Let us be joyful and happy. We ask you to save us, God, from all the evil things. And we know what that those who come doing what is right are blessed. God has given us light. Let's have a parade, a huge celebration! Because God's love lasts always and forever. Good work. Thanks.
a telling of Matthew 21 verses 1 through 11 by Simon and Isaiah Myers, the Lockdown Brothers. This is the video they created three years ago. Oh my goodness, they were so young. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and her colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them! And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of the donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet, Jesus, from Nazareth in Galilee. I used to rule the world Seas would rise when I gave the word Now in the morning I sleep alone Sweep the streets I used to own I used to roll the dice, feel the fear in my enemy's eyes, listen as the crowd would sing, now the old king is dead, long live the king, one minute I had the key, next the walls were closed on me, and I discovered that my castle stand. Upon pillars of salt and pillars of sand I hear Jerusalem bells are ringing Roman cavalry choirs are singing Be my mirror, my sword and shield My missionaries in a foreign field For some reason I can't explain Once you've gone there was never, never an honest word that was when I ruled the world. It was a wicked and a wild wind blew down the doors to let me in. Shattered windows and the sound of drums. People couldn't believe what I'd become Revolutionaries wait For my head on a silver plate Just a puppet on a lonely string Ah, uh, who would ever want to be king? I 
hear Jerusalem bells are ringing, Roman cavalry choirs are singing. Be my mirror, my sword and shield, my missionaries in a foreign field. For some reason I can't explain, I know St. Peter won't call my name, never an honest word. But that was when I knew the world. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your eyes. And God, may I never lightly presume to preach your word, and may we never lightly presume to hear your word, for in your word is abundant life. Amen. So it is Palm Sunday. <laughs> At last. Time for a parade. I mean, don't you think? Got to be a parade today. I mean, get out there in the fresh air, lots of noise, lots of carrying on. But I don't know where you are, but the weather lately, oh, so unpredictable. I mean, Holy jumping. In one day, we can move 20 degrees, minus 7 up to 14. I, I don't know whether, whether it's going to snow or whether it's going to be summer all of a sudden. I, and the thing is, if I'm not sure about something, I usually sort of wait it out until I'm sure. So maybe we should have a parade in May. Weather should be a little more stable, don't you think? In John's Gospel... Let's be honest, the parade isn't such a big deal, right? Just a couple of lines in John's Gospel. Jesus rode a donkey, people waved palms, shouted Hosanna, the end. Mark's Gospel, a little longer. We get some more backstory on the donkey, where it came from. And we hear that people threw cloaks on the ground, right? Shirts, coats, the whole thing. They waved leafy branches, not palms necessarily. And they shouted, Hosanna. Yeah, a little more story there. In today's gospel, we got sort of the longest version of the story, right? Matthew's telling of the story. We get, we get two animals, mother and a colt. And, and if you listen carefully, it, it almost sounds like Jesus is riding both of them. I don't know whether that's sort of a trick riding circus thing. I, I'm not sure. Oh, and, and of course, we also shout Hosanna. It's all rather confusing though, isn't it? As we go through the gospels. Is it a donkey? Is it one horse, two horses, palms, coats? And Well, much like unstable weather, when I'm confronted with confusion, I think it's just be best to give it a miss. You know, just go home and go to bed. You sensing the theme here? <laughs> when things don't make sense, I like to retreat. You know, get away from the conflict. Get away from the problem get away and, well, honestly, just pretend that things are fine, right? I don't have to learn. I don't have to struggle. I don't have to be burdened. I'll, I'll just wait until things get better. 
Now, I, I do notice in the Gospels that there is some agreement because they all seem to say that the people were shouting, Hosanna! <laughs> so, so that's good, right? We've got that in common anyway. Hosanna! Hallelujah! Yippee! Hooray! Hosanna! <sighs> except, except Hosanna means save us. Yeah, save us. Doesn't sound like much of a cheer. I mean, I wasn't watching the Blue Jays opening game on Thursday cheering, save us! Well, maybe in the eighth inning, but not when we won. No, I was ecstatic, I was happy, I, I love victory. Save us! I don't know, seems a little desperate. Seems a little bit worrisome. And when I get worried, when I get desperate, I retreat. I sure as heck don't go to a parade. Not until I'm sure that I'm okay and I know what it is I'm cheering for, right? <laughs> Brianne gave us a great song, Viva La Vida. <laughs> Love that song. The life lives uh, more colloquially, I guess we would say, long live life. Yeah. And I like that. I can cheer for that. I mean, who doesn't want to cheer for life? Long live life. That's diverse and inclusive, and it's everything. Long live life. That's, that's a thing I can, I can celebrate. Long live life. <laughs> Except that we know that on Palm Sunday... Jesus is on his way to his death. We read ahead. We know the story. And frankly, he knows it too. He knows that the crowd that's cheering is cheering in ignorance. They don't really know who he is. They don't get it. They haven't got a Trinitarian understanding of his relationship to God and the Holy Spirit and, and the redemption of humanity. They have no idea what they're doing. And on top of that, those people that are cheering today will be calling for his death next week. Hosannas will turn into crucify him. <sighs> Hypocrites. Hypocrites. I really don't need to spend more time with hypocrites these days. Oh. When confronted with hypocrites, I tend to withdraw. I certainly don't go to a parade. And if I did go to a parade, it wouldn't be with, you know, those people. Hmm. I mean, really, isn't there enough hypocrisy in the world without our needing to celebrate it or just ignore it? And just between us, doesn't it make you feel just a little bit guilty knowing that when push comes to shove, we probably wouldn't be much better. I mean, how is it that we manage to cheer the coming of Christ as Easter approaches when we're actually often more concerned about the Easter eggs, Easter dinner, you know? All of those things that seem somehow more important than the resurrection. On Easter, you know, we talk about how Jesus has changed the world. But there are times when we live as if Jesus hadn't come at all. And never mind us. Just thinking about the story, how does Jesus put up with it? Right? He knew all that was to come. And yet he rode that donkey into Jerusalem, listening to the cheers or maybe he rode that horse or those horses, whatever. He rode that beast into Jerusalem, listening to the cheers, I imagine, and smiling at the people, because that's what Jesus would do. He'd smile. Why didn't he just get up and tell them what was going on in their hearts? Because he knew. Why didn't he just sort of let them have it, let, let them know that they weren't fooling Anybody, just give them a dose of reality. Why not? There are moments I thought, oh, that would be so great. Jesus would just oh, take those smug hosannas out of their mouths with a little truth. Hmm. 
I can think of one reason why he didn't do that. My son. My son Paul finished high school disillusioned, confused, didn't know what he wanted to do. He certainly didn't want to go to school, way too many rules and authority. And he worked a little as a drywaller, played some music, but mostly he worked as an attendant at an automatic car wash. Can you imagine a more redundant job? Attendant at an automatic car wash. <laughs> well, things happened and we were able to get him to take a one-year course at Durham College. One of those courses just designed to get you sort of activated, motivated, to get you out of the car wash, basically. And he got activated, oh <laughs> jeepers. Yeah, less than a year into that program, he told us that he wanted to study psychology. He told us that he wanted to pursue academic studies. Not just an undergraduate degree, but graduate degree with a plural, degrees uh, the rules and the discipline that he generally disdained were now what he wanted to build his life upon. <laughs> he shared his dream with his mother and I. He was gonna need financial support, of course, but mostly he just wanted to share his dream with us. And he'd talk, and, and, and I'm not kidding, his eyes would light up with this glorious mix of confidence, excitement, and a little anxiety. He loved his dream, and he wanted us to love it too. <laughs> and as soon as the dream was out of his mouth, you know, I had this overwhelming desire to point out all the pitfalls and all the reasons that this dream was simply not going to come true. It didn't make any sense. His complete naivete when it comes to the reality of the academic world, oh my goodness. The years of work involved. His lack of any real background in the area. He'd never been interested in psychology before. The one thing I knew about him for sure is he really didn't like authority. <laughs> but one thing that I have learned, and somehow I seem to even know it then before I think I formally learned it, but the thing that I've learned is that when someone shares a dream with you, the best thing to do is to shut up and enjoy the dream. Reality will make itself known soon enough. And you never know. Maybe, maybe you're wrong and maybe this time it'll be different. I didn't need to spoil my son's dreams because of my reality. And I realized that Jesus didn't need to spoil the dreams of the crowd just because of his reality. He knew the truth. He knew what was to happen. They didn't. But he let them have their dream. In that moment of palm waving and cheering, the crowd was as sincere as they could be. They meant it when they yelled, Hosanna! Even if they didn't know exactly what it meant, they didn't know if they were cheering or saying, save us. They just knew they wanted to be there. No, they didn't have the stuff to see it through, this, this real journey of faith. But in that moment, they actually thought they did. They thought they were absolutely with Jesus. Whatever it took, wherever they were going, they were there. And it felt good to be with Jesus. And you know what that story says to me? It says that even though I may not be a perfect Christian, and I'm not a perfect Christian, even though I have my days when I don't live up to the confession that Jesus is Lord, I'm still invited to the parade. I'm still allowed to cheer, even when I'm not exactly sure what I'm cheering about. Being, being a Christian isn't about being perfect. It isn't proving that you're good enough. It's about struggling to live a, a better life. It's about working at getting closer to God. It's about loving all of God's creation. And there will be good days and there will be bad days. Palm Sunday was a good day. Yeah, there were some bad days ahead. Jesus knew it. Others suspected it. But to Jesus... 
the bad days ahead did not detract from the joy of that moment, the joy of that parade. And it shouldn't detract us either. <laughs> I can think of another reason, too, I suppose, that Jesus didn't give him a dose of reality. <laughs> that song that Brianne sang, it's a song that's sort of all wrapped up in the French Revolution. Okay, now you can tell that because the album cover is a painting of the French Revolution by Delcroix. And the words apparently are inspired by the final speech of Louis XVI, meant to be given just before his execution by guillotine. However, legend has it that those words were never heard as the shouting of the crowd and the banging of the drums drowned out anything that he would have said. A text of the intended words remain. And apparently those words share regret and an understanding of the plight of the peasants and even an acceptance of his death. And I know this because it's, it's on the internet, so there you go. <laughs> and that kind of works for Jesus, I think. You know, in that parade there, the cheering, accepting his death, understanding the plight of the lowly, understanding the plight of of humanity, you know, God in flesh. And his words, his deep meaning, perhaps overlooked, unheard because of the noise and the action of a parade. You know, when the parade's going, you don't really get the content, you just get the parade. Yeah, that kind of fits. Besides that, it's a great song, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's just so much fun to hear. It gets in your head and it just stays there. And it's, it's fun to sing. Come on, admit it, you were singing along, right? Now, of course, the fellow who wrote it, Chris Martin, he says that the song was actually inspired by the last painting of Frida Kahlo called Sandius con Leenda Viva la Vida, in which she wrote the words Viva la Vida on some watermelons. Something to do with death. I don't understand all the symbolism. But Chris thought that she had, you know, gone through a lot of crap in her life, and he liked that at the end there, she was bold. He liked that. So, so is the song about the French Revolution, or is it about Frida Kahlo? And if it's the French Revolution, well then, then why is Viva la Vida Spanish? Why aren't we saying something in French? And then Chris would later say that this is a song about a deposed dictator. And then he actually said in an interview that it actually was about his own regrets for some of the things that he did as a kid. St. Peter's not going to call his name. Another time he said it was a song about turning over a new leaf and finding humility. Well, if we're going to use the song for Palm Sunday, shouldn't we know what it means? <laughs> right? Shouldn't we sort of fix there and narrow it to figure out what does it, what does that song mean? I mean, if we're going to cheer, shouldn't we all be cheering the same thing for goodness sakes? I mean, let's at least agree what Spanish, French, what, shouldn't we have some kind of agreement? <laughs> you know, we, we live in this skeptical age with millions of facts at our fingertips, artificial intelligence to guide us when we don't know what to do. And we have a tendency to rely on on our intellect, on what we know. Right? I mean, before we join something or before we begin an endeavor, we strive to learn all that we can about it. We read books, we investigate claims, we Google, we check out people on social media before we date, like we do all of these things. We want to understand completely before we become part, before we join in. We tend to say, you know what? Before we do what you want us to do, explain it to us so that we can understand. More and more we rely on understanding things before we participate. I need you to explain to me what this parade is all about before I start waving any kind of green leafy branches or throwing my shirt down on the ground. And most of you, like me, are nodding going, well, of course, that only makes sense. Yeah, you gotta know what it's all about. But there is another way. On Palm Sunday, 
Jesus invited people to celebrate his arrival into Jerusalem. Those who knew what was going to happen and those who didn't have a clue. He invited people to cheer, but also cry, save us. He invited the faithful and the hypocrites to stand together in the same parade and recognize that they weren't all that different after all. I don't know, are you a hypocrite or are you a faithful? I, um, what am, when you think of it, the church at its best says to folks, come, come on in, do what we do, and the understanding will come. We don't have an entrance exam. We simply have a desire to be together and to experience God, each of us, in our own way. And some days, we don't even know what it means to experience God. That's what's going on on Palm Sunday. People are participating without fully understanding what they were doing. But Jesus gets that. Jesus is fine with that. Jesus understands that's who we are. We're human beings. We're not always so sure. Jesus knew that in time, the crowd might come to believe and maybe even understand, not by some intellectual process, but by participating, by doing. It's in the doing that we learn sometimes. You can't learn the piano by understanding it before you ever touch the keys. You've actually got to run your hands up and down on the keyboard and start to hear the sounds and love the music that comes out. So today, if you're not sure, don't retreat. Show up. Show up for a parade. Show up for another person. Sit down and play the piano. Show up where you're needed. Show up where you want to be. You're part of the parade. Don't wait until the time is perfect. Don't wait until you understand it all. Just show up. We are invited to shout Hosanna if it's a cheer or if it's a cry for help. And even if it's both. We're invited to look around and recognize that us and them aren't so different at all. We all want to experience God, even if we describe the experience differently. And in going through the motions, in the showing up, we are actually building our faith. And we are sharing a collective dream of living in a world where God's will is always done. Where love matters more than anything else. <laughs> Imagine that. A time when we will we'll be at peace because we will understand, but more importantly, we will feel God's love. And some of us are leading the parade and others are following. And sometimes we move around in that parade, but we're all part of the parade. So if you have dreams that probably won't come true, <laughs> don't give up. Shout Hosanna anyway. Oh, did I forget to mention? My son, Paul, you know, uh, he's now Dr. Paul Seeley, a professor of neuroscience at Duke University. <laughs> yeah, like I've never mentioned that before. <laughs> if you're not a perfect Christian, shout Hosanna anyway. If you don't understand it all, shout Hosanna anyway. If sometimes it just feels like you're going through the motions, I know. Shout Hosanna anyway. I don't know if you'll suddenly understand it all or you'll get it all in that moment, but I do know that as you're shouting Hosanna, you will be in very good company. And it's a lot better than retreating. I promise. Shout Hosanna anyway. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of courage and compassion. God of celebration and expectation. 
as we prepare to follow Jesus through this week, we give you thanks that he faced those who opposed him with courage and not violence, bearing every pain and sorrow others inflicted. God, we trust that your love has power in every situation, even the most troubling or tragic. So hear us as we bring to you the people and places who are near and dear to us this day. We pray for all who are struggling with poverty, sickness or grief, and any feeling overwhelmed by things beyond their control. Stay with them day by day and restore their hope and health. Hosanna, save us. Hear our prayer. We pray for people and places facing violence, war, and corruption, and all who fear for what this day may bring. We are especially mindful today of the friends and family of the three students and three staff killed in yet another mass shooting. One of over 130 mass shootings in the United States this year. We also pray for the family and friends of Gabriel Macalis, killed this week while riding the TTC. Grant them courage and protection and restore their hope and peace. Hosanna, save us. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who challenge tyranny, brutality, and injustice, and all who raise their voices for the vulnerable and the victimized. Give them strength and restore their hope and freedom. Hosanna, save us. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who face persecution because of racism, belief, or identity and for each one who has been shamed or humiliated by someone more powerful. God, assure them of their value as your children and restore their hope and dignity. Hosanna, save us, hear our prayer. As we say another prayer, one that you taught us so long ago.
go forth from this moment and shout, Hosanna! Shout, save us. Shout, viva la vida! Long live life. Shout, long live love. Go into the world and celebrate life. Go into the world and love the world, even though you haven't got it all figured out. Even though you're not perfect. Go forth knowing that better than perfect, you are loved by the Creator. You are in a parade with Jesus who walks with us every day and you are absolutely sustained and encouraged, uplifted and empowered by the Holy Spirit that surrounds and fills each and every one of us. <sighs> Until we gather again, virtually or in person, through this time of Holy Week at the celebration of the resurrection, Hosanna, amen. Amen. Oh,